internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Magic Brad here, Synergy Cafe, and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got another interview today, and his name is Mike. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good, Brad. How you doing? You know, I go by Magic Brad, and a lot of people say, hey, Magic Mike. They call me Magic Mike, but that's the dancer. I don't dance, although I got to learn. My wife wants me to take dance lessons, so. <laughs> None of that. Okay. So, I don't do these too long because, uh, you know, time is a commodity. We don't want to take uh, people's valuable time. So we uh, condense it all into one and find out who you are, what you do, and all that. So who's Mike? You got a family? I do. I have uh, a beautiful wife named Brittany. I have four kids. So four. I've got four. What's that? Four? Four. Six and under. All of them are six and under. So Ooh, okay. Um, I need some magic to try to get them to listen, you know, yeah. at, at different times. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, six, four, two, and four months. Wow. So we we are busy. And where do you live? I live in a place called East Liverpool, Ohio, which is near Youngstown and, and about an hour and a half from Cleveland. Ohio, yeah. What's round on the outside and high in the middle? Ohio, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Not for that. So what is it that you do as far as your occupation and, and things of that sort? Yeah, sure. So I'm the president of a company called the Mainstream Leadership Network, and I'm a speaker, an author, and a networker. So um, our mission is to help leaders live fulfilled and impactful lives. And so our, our, our whole concept is to connect with leaders, have compassion of where they're at, and then help them transform into the person and the leader that they're supposed to be. And um, really helping people discover who they are and then using their gifts to you know, help the world. They're kind of a John Maxwell kind of thing? Um, yeah. You know, yes. Similar. Um, we get a little deeper into um, the subconscious, you know, not, not so much of the practices as much as helping people find out who they are. But, yeah, mm -hmm. similar. Yeah, leadership is an interesting thing because some people look at it as almost like a, like a dictatorship, but it's not that way. It's more of a motivator, persuader, follow mm -hmm. me kind of thing. Yeah, leadership. absolutely. I, I, I wrote a paper about it in grad school about um, a leader is a footstool, and a true leader is going to lay themselves down to help people get to higher ground, and, and that means you have to be very strong. It means you have to be able to, to take a lot of crap because people step on you with the crap on their shoes sometimes, and you have to be able to handle that. And, and it's very hard to lead. It's very easy to manage. It's very hard to lead, but you need both. I mean, you need management practices and leadership practices, but leadership is a different animal. Now, did you say psychological leadership? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a multidisciplinary study, so there's absolutely a, a copious amount of psychology involved. You really do have to know the psychology of human beings if you're going to be an effective leader. It's interesting because a lot of the psychology stuff is coming into my business and stuff. I've been working on the Internet, so I understand all these tools and things for the Internet. And now it's getting more into the psychology of why a person even takes the first step and then helping them to get through it. And uh, it's a very, uh, it's an interesting process because it can, can be manipulative with a lot of this NLP and stuff, you know, timeshare salesmen, when you don't really want a timeshare, but they get you to get it and now you yeah. got one and you don't want it. But So that's part of the reason for doing these interviews because we look at you and find out who you are and you got a good smile and everything and you're, you seem like a trustworthy <laughs> guy, so you're not gonna get us to buy a timeshare, are you? <laughs> yeah, no, no. That, you know, to me, Magic Brad, the biggest thing for me is the heart. The leader has to have the right heart, and that is to serve others and to help other people reach higher ground. And at the end of the day, it's like the Zig Ziglar quote. If you help enough people get what they want out of life, you'll also get what you want out of life. And so, yeah, with the NLP and um, the different psychological practices, some of the manipulative things that can happen, it can definitely be, you know, a very 
leadership can end up being a very heinous thing if someone doesn't have the right heart. And so well, I'm big on What's cool about all this is, is even NLP is changing from neuro-linguistic programming into neuro-linguistic persuasion, which is a little bit softer and not as manipulative, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. I like to ask, like, are you an AM guy or a PM guy? Do you like to get your work done in the morning or the evening? Just kind of curious. Yeah, well, with the four kids, oh. I wake. <laughs> okay. I have to wake up. Um, I do have an office. It was one of the better decisions that I've made. You know, um, we got an office a few years ago. And so I'm, I'm more of an AM guy. However, you, you know, the hustle and bustle of taking the kids to school, it, you know, sometimes get, gets in the way. So I am more of an AM guy. I've always woken up really early. I'm a, I'm a military veteran. So I, I got used to waking up at five in the morning and it kind of stuck with me when I got out. So I'm an AM guy. So where do you do your work? Do you like consult with clients? Do you do it like via Skype or you, I know you're a speaker you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. So you go to their location, I'm assuming their conference or whatever to speak on their stages. But where do you do yeah. your work? So I do that. Um, but as a part of our network, we also have coaches. And, and so I do a lot of stuff online as well. I hold leadership classes online. We, we do seven to 10 people in a group. And so once a month I'll meet with a group of leaders for a few hours and, and we'll get into um, the nitty gritties. Um, so I do a lot online. Um, we use, you know, different tools for that. But yeah, I travel a lot, which is something I, I'd like to change. I, I want to build a building and have people come to us just because, you know, being away from the kids is hard. Well, here's a, something I'll just throw out. And if anybody's listening, they can maybe participate too. But I'm looking at building these retreats in some exotic locations, like maybe Tulum in Costa Rica. And some of them would yeah. be like business masterminds. So maybe we could do something leadership related. And my thinking on it is to do it so that spouses or partners, business partners or business uh, spouse, uh, spouses can go together and bring the family if you want. So I want to design it that way so that you can keep it all together and you don't have to separate the family to do it. That would be awesome. I'd love to participate. I actually just got invited to go to Puerto Rico for something like that. Um, so I'm very interested in that. I think, I think again, partnerships and collaboration is the way to go. So That's anytime. This is all about Synergy Collaborative is one of my websites, yeah. synergycollaborative.com. So before I ask my, my final fun question, I was just going to ask you, what's your uh, interpretation of or your definition of the word abundance, just out of my own curiosity? Yeah, that's, a, that's such a great question. I think, I think abundance is, um, there's an old proverb that says, you know, your cup runs over, right? Where you have, you have so much internally to feel good about. You're so fulfilled in yourself that your cup runs over. And, and it's like, it's an ever ending stream that's going to keep coming through and being able to give out of that. So I think it's where you find critical mass in your own life and you find a connection point in your life where your cup is constantly running over, so to speak, and that pours into every area of your life. And so abundance is, I have so much that I could give, I can give away and it'll keep coming. It's okay. that gift that just keeps on giving. The reason I ask that is because I was I used to live in Asheville, North Carolina, and a guy says, you know, just enough. And it's like, you know, just enough. So like I don't know if you can see that, but can you see a little fountain back here? Maybe I can yes. move my little computer back. See a little fountain? See how that's overflowing and yeah. burbling out? Yes. Now, it could be just kind of flowing over the rock and it's just enough. But I'm talking about it's coming out in abundance. So yes. I think we're on the same page there. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, my favorite question, here it comes. This is the big why question. Why is it, are you doing this? Why haven't you perceived or, or pursued a military career? Or why aren't you a, why don't you have a daycare center? You got enough kids for it. But why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, um, I come from kind of a sordid background. You know, 17 years ago, I was on a jail cell floor. And um, I literally had a guy um, who, who changed my life with his words and his belief in me when, you know, no one should have believed in me. And so he, you know, he, he looked at me, said, you've got so much more in you than, than, you know, you're a person of great value. He called me a masterpiece and he just kind of plucked me out of the life I was in and, and spoke life into me. And so once I began to believe what he said about me, my life exploded into change. And so I, I, my heart has just been to help 
free other people as well. And, and I believe with all my heart that people are extraordinary, meant to do extraordinary things. And I think life is it's a kick in the head and life is going to continue to come at us because life isn't set up for us to be successful. The world isn't set up for people to have the abundant life that they want. And so I just want to help people, those who who are daring to take the journey with me to give them the tools necessary internally and mentally to overcome the hurdles and challenges that they face. And so that's why I do what I do, because I have a, a fundamental belief that people are extraordinary, meant to do extraordinary things. But I don't think many find it because they don't have the tools and the skills necessary. And, and that's what I offer. Okay, very cool. It's, I love answering that question. I Quite honestly, I think I get the same answer all the time. It's about helping other people. And that's why people are on their path. So there is hope for humanity, so to speak. Um, yes. It's interesting to bring that up. I would have another discussion with you because you said something about life isn't meant or designed for us to be like to be easy or whatever but i think it is if you get in the right flow it's kind of like i use the analogy of a combination lock a lot yeah you try and open one up and you don't know the combination it's hard life yeah. is hard but if you know the combination it's a breeze so working with someone like you that is a leader or teaches leadership it very easily could just show them here's the first digit here's the second digit and here's the third digit Easy. Absolutely. Cool. Yep. Well, I appreciate yeah. you taking the time. Again, I don't like to leave too much time, but if you want to tell, share with us how do we get a hold of you, web links, you got a book coming up, you got a new program you're sharing, how do you get involved with your network yes. and all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've got a, a website, it's www.mainstreamls.com, so mainstreamlimasam.com, and um, I'm on LinkedIn, Michael B. Ross on LinkedIn. I write an article every week for that. I have a podcast called A Better Life Podcast, which we'll be changing the name to that. And then um, all the other social media outlets as well, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, we are on there as well. So I'd love to connect with people. And um, I have two books. One's called Overcoming the Character Deficit, which is just focused on um, what's wrong with society. It's a character deficit. And then the other one, a clear view, is on how to have a positive self-image, which 85% of adults have a negative self-image. So it gives you the tools necessary to overcome that. Then I have a book coming out in March called Creating Culture. Uh, my expertise in leadership is culture, so helping to create an environment that is conducive to leadership and growth and values. So that will be coming out in March. I'm looking forward to that one. But um, I'd love to connect with, with anybody who, who would like to connect. And, um, and again, I think you and I collaborating, I think that would be the, the greatest thing for reaching more people. So Magic yeah. Brad, I look forward to it. Let's, uh, I'll close this one out and let's talk further. Um, let's get connected. I've got a website called followmagicbrad.com and you can get connected with me on all these other social medias and stuff. And then I want to talk to you about your books and stuff because me and a friend are working on a program or a sort of, I don't want to call it a system, but a method of, of leveraging the traffic on Amazon to as the front end to build the back end of businesses. So I want to talk to you about that. So stand awesome. by and peace, love, and happiness. Thank you all for watching. Be well.